Hot damn, it's another edition of the Nuclear Pod Blast. I'm your host, Drewcifer. You can call me Andrew. And I'm super excited once again to be here with you as your master of metal ceremonies. This episode, we've only got one interview, but it's with the one and only Alexi Leho of Children of Bodom. The band's 10th album just came out a few days ago, and I hope you agree with me that Hexed has surpassed all expectations, especially after how strong the previous release, I Worship Chaos, is. The interview with Alexi actually took place a couple of months ago, long before the release of the album. As usual, it was great to speak with the wild child, get his view on the new record, and what's happening with Children of Bodom in general. The North American tour will kick off very soon, and I'm looking forward to the hate crew returning to the road. Also during this episode of the Nuclear Pod Blast, we'll debut some brand new metal from Sweden's Enforcer, good friends of mine, ex Elveti players, Seller Darling, California extreme metalers, Fallujah, the one and only Grand Magus, as well as a classic cut from In Flames, as they just kicked off their current North American tour, supporting Within Temptation. We'll talk about all of the upcoming Nuclear Blast North American releases, as well as the tours hitting the North American continent, and we'll look into what kind of vinyl is being reissued on the horizon. We'll get started with some brand new stuff from the band Arrival of Autumn. Their new album Harbringer comes out worldwide March 29th. Born and raised in the tiny city of Grand Prairie in Alberta, Canada, these guys grew up 300 miles from the nearest international airport. Inspired by the likes of Metallica, Lamb of God, Trivium, Black Dahlia Murder, and others, uh, their music doubled as a refuge from small town melee and nearly six months of winter as the band formally came to life in 2011. When you're in a boring city in the middle of nowhere, people find themselves susceptible to destructive habits, so you need to have a willingness to avoid those, says lead vocalist Jameson Friesen. Playing music is how we grounded ourselves. Man, I could relate to that totally. This is the track Witness from Arrival of Autumn. Again, their brand new record, Harbringer, out worldwide March 29th. And welcome back to the Nuclear Pod Blast.
This is the Nuclear Pod Blast. There's only one guy that sounds like that vocally, and that's JB from Grand Magus. Wolf God is the band's ninth studio album with no signs of slowing down, man. 
That was the title track here on the Nuclear Pod Blast with Drucifer. Thanks for jumping on board. April 19th is a release date for Wolf God. I remember when the band's debut record came out in 2001 on Rise Above Records. I had the pleasure of interviewing JB back when the band's third album, Wolf's Return, was released in 2005, and that became a cover story for Metal Maniacs magazine. And I know that some of you out there remember Metal Maniacs, as it lasted 20 years in print form in North America until 2008. Rest in peace, like so many others. JB and Grand Magus started as more of a doom metal band back then, and took on more traditional and power metal interests as the albums evolved. And I'd love to see this band get a chance at a full North American tour. But again, April 19th, the new Grand Magus record, Wolf God. Before that, brand new stuff from Arrival of Autumn. Their track Witness from the Harbringer record comes out March 29th. We'll get into the brand new Children of Bodom record, Hexed, very soon. Got our interview with Alexi Leho lined up. But first, some more brand new stuff. Uh, This here from Swiss folk metal sensation Elveti. Now, they're releasing their eighth studio album on April 5th entitled Atanatos. With a revamped lineup since 2017, there seems to be a little bit of a revitalized uh, sound going on here with the new record. So, the band has dates booked through the rest of the year throughout Europe, the UK, Scandinavia, Australia, and New Zealand, but nothing here in North America. This is the title track, Atanatos, from Elveti. I hope I'm not butchering that too badly. Again, out April 5th, and you heard it on the Nuclear Pod Blast. O oh, bright sun of the night, I lift my eyes up to thee. O oh, ye amber golden light, let the dark sweep over me. Mighty cauldron, O Nidus, I surrender all to thee. Panacea nothingness, when nothing is left.
That's the title track from the brand new Elevati record, Atanatos. Comes out April 5th, Worldwide Nuclear Blast Records. It's Drusifer back with the Nuclear Pod Blast. Thanks for listening. And before that, brand new stuff from Grand Magus, Wolf God, the title track from their upcoming ninth studio record, April 19th. Let's run down all the March and April releases for North America. Of course, the new Children of Bodom out now. The Wings of War vinyl release for Overkill comes out this next week, as well as the new album from Fallujah, Undying Light. You'll hear something from that album later on in the Pod Blast. Forever Still releases their new record, Breathe in Colors, March 22nd, along with Battle Beast and No More Hollywood Endings. The Spell from Cellar Darling comes out on March 22nd as well, featuring ex Elveti players. We'll get into a track from that coming up soon. We've got some more Blind Guardian reissues hitting on April 12th. Wolf God from Grand Magus, April 19th. Overkill releases a 7-inch also on the 19th of April. Last Man Standing with the B-side Bat Shit Crazy. Awesome. The new album from Enforcer Zenith, April 26th, as well as the brand new record High Crimes from The Damned Things. Yes, The Damned Things. The supergroup. Right, right. Hexed, the new album from Children of Bodom, the 10th studio album from the band, just came out a few days ago. We've got the upcoming North American tour hitting soon. And the always charismatic Alexi Leho may not be as wild as he used to be, but the new album shows the ferocity and intelligent songwriting that he's been known for for almost two decades now. I've been lucky enough to promote a few Children of Bodom records over the years, and the last couple of releases have seemed to come full circle with the band in terms of intensity and focus. Loving the new record, Hexed. Let's get to it. This is Under Grass and Clover, brand new Children of Bodom, here on the Nuclear Pod Blast.
updates Drusifer back with the nuclear pod blast. The brand new Children of Bodom record comes out March 8th worldwide. We've got with us Alexi Leho. Congratulations on this album, man. It sounds great. And to me, it actually stands out from the last few Bodom albums, mainly for the diversity uh, and the flow of the track listing. Did you think this was a special album uh, for the band once you started recording it? Well, first of all, thank you, sir. And uh, yeah, you're right about the diversity thing. And and I think, I mean, the music itself was not really thought out. I mean, it never is when I when I start writing. I, I just sort of, I just I just go for it <clears throat> and then see what happens and hope for the best. But as far as the uh, the order of the songs on the on the record, that was very well thought out actually and planned. And, uh, and uh, especially open the, the, the opening track uh, called This Road. Uh, that's something uh, very different from, from the opening tracks from the past records. You know, it's just different because we, you know, we always pick the heaviest and the fastest and whatnot type yeah. song. But, Come but for this one, yeah, it's more kind of like, you know, it's it's not slow. It's, it, it's definitely, you know, it's very uh, eventful song, but... And, you know, it's just like really groovy and melodic too, but uh, yeah, it's different. So, And then the, the, the track number two, Under Grass and Clover, that's, uh, that, with that song, you can definitely hear like the, 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 the C or B of the chill and bottom in there. Like it's, it's, it's not exactly like old school bottom, but there are definitely uh, old school elements in it. Yeah, and, and again, the record has got a lot to offer, some stuff that's very familiar and some stuff that's, uh, you know, kind of new for the band. And you mentioned how you never have anything, you know, really thought out before you, uh, before you start on a record. So is that the way it's always been? Because I was going to ask if your approach to writing a record now is different from, say, 10 or 15 years ago. Uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty much the same that it's always been. You know, I, I actually learned that it's better not to think about it or plan anything very uh, early on, you know. Because the thing is that, if you think about it too much, you know, then it's in, in, inevitable that you're going to start thinking about, like, you, you're going to start worrying about what people think and what they're going to like or not like. And then it's not really, uh, then the, the music's not honest anymore. You know, you're just trying to please people. And the fact of the matter is that you just, you know, you can't be everybody's friend. So <laughs> you, you just need to block everything out of your mind and not plan anything like, you know, not plan whether or not this should be faster or heavier or anything you know just go for it and like i said um there's never guarantees you know if people are gonna like it or not so you just gotta yeah like i said you just gotta offer the best so Mm -hmm. i'm i'm definitely happy with this with this album and the songs in it but uh you know we'll 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 see what people think of it well hecate's nightmare uh, really stands out on its own with that mid-tempo 4-4 beat and that creepy atmosphere uh, this had to be a fun song to put together. Oh yeah, absolutely. It's actually a, some, it, it's something that that you know when I played when I played the records for my uh, for my friends or whatever. You know that's always one of the songs that people people comment on. And and uh, usually the word I mean the first word would be as you said creepy because it it kind of sounds like especially the intro. Um, you know it's like a creepy music box type thing going on in there and. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, so it's pretty dark, but it's also like it's got a good groove, <clears throat> groove in it, and and the chorus is w- when you think about it, like you know when you think about the guitar riff in the background and everything, it, it's it's kind of like eighties heavy. It's got a it's got an eighties heavy metal vibe in it. Sure, but but it's yeah, I suppose you know it just sounds more modern, you know, with the with the low tuning and everything. But yeah, it's a fun. I mean, it's it's definitely one of my favorite songs. I read where you proclaimed uh, that Platitudes and Barren Words to be the most difficult track to write and arrange for the new album. And as it turns out, that's actually my particular favorite track uh, so far. The guitar, oh. yeah, the guitar intricacies, the details are, are just amazing. Uh, and that chorus is just pure rock and roll. Yeah, yeah the chorus is, uh, it's actually funny, the chorus originally was not the chorus, it was, it was supposed to be a pre-chorus. And uh, I mean, and that's you know, like you, like you said. I mean, it definitely was. It was a major pain in the ass to put that song together. I mean, <laughs> not, not like you know, it wasn't. 
it wasn't bad for me to write or, or come up with the riffs or anything, but, you know, just arrangement was, it just seemed like it took forever and it was so goddamn frustrating, man. But, and, uh, and, and, you know, the, the chorus originally, not being the chorus, that's just one of the million examples uh, about, you know, what changed. But, uh, yeah, I mean, you just keep, keep doing it. And we just went to a rehearsal pad every single day, you know, we just kept playing and playing it, changing things here and there, you know, and changing the order of the riffs and the parts and everything. And then finally, you know, I, I remember the moments, you know, finally when we tried out this certain order of the parts that is the song now. And we, all of us were like, dude, I think we got it finally. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it was a long process, but it paid off. Yeah. 
That's Platitudes and Barren Words from Children of Bodom, the new Hexed album. We've got Alexi Lehot speaking with us right now for the Nuclear Pod Blast. Thanks again for taking the time, man. Yeah, no worries, man. Now, the cover yeah. art for Hexed is something new for the band. Uh, instead of a digital design, you guys chose to work with a new artist. Obviously different and striking in its own right. So do you think you may keep this approach uh, maybe next album or? Uh, I don't know, really. I I think that that's another thing that we try not to plan either. But, but uh, you know, it was definitely different, you know, to have an actual painting, you know, to, uh, you know, to be the, be the album cover because, you know, you know, once the artist is actually finished with it, then that's it. There's no con- there's no going back. Yeah, it's cool to and have a physical original copy. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of cool. I like I like that element on, on the cover that it's like it's very real. And then you know, it's it's definitely different. Like the Reaper, you know, it's got I don't know. I mean, the Reaper looks more witchy or something. Yeah, for sure. And uh, and of course, you know. For us, and especially for me, I think the one color theme has always been very important for us. You know, it's just something like, well, back in the day, it actually did serve a purpose. You know, when people go to record stores and stuff like that, you know, it, it, like the one color theme, you know, when you see yep. like a bright green or bright blue, yeah. like when, when, you're, <clears throat> when you're browsing through the records, I mean, it, you know, it would, it would stick out. But anyway, uh, this time around, you know, it, it's... We finally got to do the, you know, finally got to do purple, which is something I always wanted to do, but we never just, I don't, I don't know why, but we just never did it. So, have the colors so that's pretty cool. Have the colors always been the same too, as far as you're not, you just don't plan it, but until the record is written and something comes to mind? Well, yes and no. It's, we don't really plan it and we don't even, we don't even think about it until we really have to. And that's usually around the time we hit the studio or even before that, you know, it's usually the, uh, the record label or the management that would let us know when we need to start working on that so but it's always better when i don't know why it's really hard to explain and i don't really have a good reason but it's always better uh to have something uh i mean like a song or two songs or anything you know just to get get some sort of a vibe of uh what the album's gonna be like sure. it, it's not exactly it doesn't it doesn't work like you know, you, you play a riff and then you go like, ooh, this sounds purple. You know, it, it's just, you know, <laughs> sure. but you, you do get an idea from, even just from one song or two. Try not to play the brown notes, though. <laughs> I'll try not to. <laughs> well, this is the band's 10th studio album, uh, so that's a milestone in itself. Children of Bodom, you guys have a definite, definite sound to you, a stamp. Is it just as important for you to keep that sound that you have? as it is to, say, forge new ground musically? Well, that would be, um, yeah, that would be another yes and no. I think it is important to, you know, keep this, keep the keep cer- certain elements in our music that, you know, <clears throat> kind of gets people to recognize that, oh, that's that's bottom, you know, even even before they knew what, what band they were listening to. Right. And, uh, but the thing is that, that, okay, yeah, it's always good to, try new things and, and put new elements in the music but just don't like i wouldn't go too far you know what i mean like you know i remember i remember back in the day this was a long time ago but it, it's, it seemed to be some sort of a trend that a lot of death metal bands would all of a sudden sudden they would go for some sort of like depeche mode uh kind of direction and, absolutely and i always I catatonia always paradise of, lost all those yeah, bands. Man. yeah 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 definitely so, and i always found i don't know i found that kind of weird it, it's not that i'm like you know bad mouthing those bands i'm just saying that if it was me and i wouldn't want to play metal anymore you know i would just start another group but like in this case like for example i can guarantee that you and bum Bottom's never gonna do do anything like that. I mean, we're gonna we're gonna play metal, um, and if we if we get sick of playing metal, then that's you know game over. That that's it. And then if we want to do Depeche Mode, then you know <laughs> start another band. As a worldwide guitar hero, how do you keep interested in the instrument after so many albums and shows? I mean, is it still the same love for that basic instrument, or do you have to you know try new things to keep it? keep it fresh it's definitely a love for the instrument yeah i i do play i do play guitar uh 
every day, even though I'm not practicing for anything particular. You know,、mm-hmm. I, I just love playing. But I, <clears throat> I'm also very. I, I just want to learn new things all the time. And and the beautiful beautiful thing about playing an instrument is that you can never, you can never be good enough. You can never reach a certain limit. There's no limit to anything. I mean, maybe okay, maybe speed and stuff like that. But that's just that's just a tiny part of it.、Mm-hmm. And there are different techniques that that like I've been. Sort of trying out lately, and and there's always going to be as long as you just keep on playing, you're going to find find yourself doing stuff that you have never done before. So、uh, I think that the key thing is that you just keep doing it. And luckily for me, I, I just love it and I enjoy it so much that it doesn't feel like a chore or anything. Because like I know that there are some people who just like who play guitar just because they have to because it's their job. And yeah, okay, yeah. it is my job, but but I also love doing it. There's nothing saying you can't love what you do for a living. Yeah, man, no, it's no, it's true. I mean, it's、yeah. just so, it's、uh, pretty good. Yeah, I saw. Was it three years ago? I saw that video where you were commissioned to write a song for the Helsinki Festival, and you invited a hundred guitar players along with you to join、uh, you on、oh, stage、yeah. for that. Now, where did that idea come from, and what kind of a, a mass undertaking did that actually become? It was huge, man. It was like.、Uh, Yeah, it was pretty rad.、Um, actually, it was、uh, the Helsinki City Festival is like one of those really,、uh, I guess, prestigious and like really like old festivals. You know, they've been doing it forever. And usually, it's I think it's been mostly just like classical music and and, and jazz and ballet and like that sort of thing. And、uh, but they they contact my my management and ask if I wanted to do this. Hundred like this Hendrik guitars、uh, concept that they they actually tried to do. With, so it was、uh, their concept. This, I get it. Yeah, and、uh, and I remember that I had I had an album to write、uh, the I worship I worship chaos. I had a bunch of other stuff to do, so I was already super busy. But like when somebody offers that sort of an idea for you, that okay, you have to write、uh, a fifteen minute song. Four hundred guitar players plus the the, the the background band. I mean, to me, since you know, I I live for challenges. I mean, there was no way that I was gonna say no to that. So I I just had to. I just like with the event without thinking about it. I was like, yes, yes, I'll do it.、Wow. <laughs> and、uh, it was yeah, it, it was、uh, it was a lot of work, man, a lot of work, and it certainly kept me busy because, like I said, I was also writing the C the CLB album and. And other stuff. So, but yeah, it was cool, man. You know, just like hundred people from all over the world got together, and once they were in in Helsinki, we practiced like they set set up like hundred martial amps in this big hall, <clears throat> and we would practice until midnight for two days, and then、uh, we we played the we did the show for, like third day, and yeah, I think we nailed it. It was unbelievable, man. I mean, I gotta tell you, I. I was nervous, but like in a really good way. Like right before the show, it、mm-hmm. felt like one of the first times when I would go. I mean, when I would hit the stage,、right. it was really cool, actually. So,、uh, any last words? Do you have a favorite track you want to you want to talk about real quick? Or I don't know. Well, I, it, it changes every day for me. You know, when I when I think of the songs. But well, there's you know, Hecate's Nightmare definitely, and right now、uh, the opening track, This Road. I mean, that's the only because I mean, there's so much. Like cool guitar stuff going on in there, so that's been my my、yeah. favorite lately.、Uh, we look forward to seeing you here in the states.、Um, congrats, man, on album number ten, and we appreciate you talking to us here at the Nuclear Pod Blast. Yeah, of course, man. All right. Thanks for checking out the Nuclear Pod Blast. Music to mangle your minds. A big thanks to Alexi Leho for joining us here on the Nuclear Pod Blast, giving us his insight on the new record Hexed,、uh, but I'm sure enjoying it from top to bottom. Looking forward to the North American tour kicking off real soon. Bodum is back. Now Sweden's Enforcer are a band I've personally known for a long time. In fact, I put the band up for a couple of days on their very first North American tour back in like 2009 with Canada's Cauldron. And again, their new record Zenith comes out April 26th the worldwide. Now, if you've followed Enforcer over the years, you know they've kind of taken like an early Iron Maiden. Paul Diano era Iron Maiden sound, and you know, kind of mixed it with some early American thrash metal.、Uh, great soaring vocals, of course. 
But this track here off the new record kind of has more of, a, of an arena rock vibe to it. A little bit more anthemic, but uh, you be the judge. This is Die for the Devil, brand new stuff from Enforcer on the Nuclear Pod Blast. is the Nuclear Pod Blast. Get more info at nuclearblast.com.
I remember seeing the very first In Flames show in the U.S. at the Milwaukee Metal Fest in 1999. Uh, Colony had just come out like maybe a month or two before. Uh, the band were late flying into Milwaukee and made it to the Eagles Ballroom just in time to take the stage for their set. Uh, there's a great video uh, from that show on YouTube. A guy sitting in the uh, you know in the photo pit just got the whole 40 minute set uh, taped. So check that out. It's pretty cool. And that of course was Behind Space '99 from the Colony record that turns 20 years old this year. Is that crazy or what? Uh, the new In Flames record, I the Mask, is out now via Nuclear Blast in Europe and the rest of the world. However, it's being released in North America by 11.7 Music. So over here, Nuclear Blast is not working the new In Flames record. Before the end of this episode of the Pod Blast, we'll play some brand new stuff from Fallujah and their upcoming record, Undying Light, which comes out March 15th. I've got some classic blast from the guys in Gorefest. Yes, Gorefest. And right here is some brand new stuff from Cellar Darling featuring ex-members of Elveti. March 22nd is the release date for the album The Spell. And uh, Charles from the Nuclear Blast North American office actually turned me on to this track, Drown, like a modern-day version of The Gathering, if you're familiar with that band. So here we go. This is Drown from Cellar Darling here on the Nuclear Pod Blast.
This is the Nuclear Pod Blast. Going back 27 years to the second album from Gorefest, the greatest extreme metal band from the Netherlands. That was the title track from False, part of the Gorefest reissues that Nuclear Blast did in 2005 around the band's reformation for two albums before finally calling it quits a second time. 
false was a lesson in extreme metal proficiency. What an underrated record. That band is still a favorite of mine today. Some upcoming North American tours to look out for. Uh, the Uncle Acid and Graveyard Peace Across the Wasteland Tour is in full swing. And I'm seeing that show in Denver next week, actually. What a great co-headlining bill as Graveyard finally get to play new material from the Peace album to North American audiences. Death Angel are doing a string of headline dates with Active Defiance in support, which lead the bands east to meet up with Overkill for the full North American run in support of the new Overkill record, The Wings of War. One of those Death Angel and Act of Defiance dates is here in beautiful Colorado, and I'll also be seeing the Overkill Tour in Chicago, so if you're there, hit me up for a beer. Light the Torch is currently on the road here in North America, and Venom Inc. will begin a run of nine dates in the U.S. and a couple of Canadian shows as well, with Ex Mortis and Homewrecker that begins here in Colorado on April 24th. Ah, the smoke of hell is rising in North America once again. Check out all the artist roster tour dates at NuclearBlastUSA.com and also be sure to go to the web shop for all the latest vinyl reissues, including all of the Meshuggah titles and select titles from Blind Guardian and Nightwish. There's some upcoming Halloween reissues as well that will be shipping in late April, so secure your pre-orders now, again at the web store at NuclearBlastUSA.com. Finishing out this episode of the Nuclear Pod Blast, the latest album from Fallujah, Undying Light, which sees the light of day on March 15th. Now, these California progressive death metalers are swinging upward and venturing outward on the new album, Undying Light. Fallujah's third album, Dreamless, cemented them as extreme metal rising stars as it charted in the US, Canada, and Australia. Guitarist and songwriter Scott Carstairs says, Undying Light is something else entirely. We wanted this record to be a statement of what the band is and will continue to be. We believe that this is the truest sound we have honed in on yet. With the addition of new vocalist Antonio Palermo, we have been able to take the sound to new levels of emotion, a sound we have been striving to achieve for years, but couldn't quite get to until now. So check it out for yourselves. This is Ultraviolet, brand new stuff from Fallujah, and that'll close out this edition of the Nuclear Pod Blast. This is Drucifer. Thank you once again for checking out the show. We'll be back with the next episode in early May, and thanks for being so damned metal.
Thanks for checking out the Nuclear Pod Blast. Music to mangle your mind.